Okay. You wouldn't know what to do with a small holding. Marathon, and it's the turn of the runner in black and white stripes to take over the front running. Magpie fans have lived on nostalgia for some time now, 29 years to be exact. It was 1958 that Collingwood won its last premiership, stopping Melbourne from equaling the Magpies' record of four flags in a row. Melbourne had finished three games clear on top, with Collingwood second. Melbourne won the second semi by 55 points to become even firmer favourites. The Pies beat North in the preliminary, setting up another Melbourne Collingwood grand final, the third in four years. A record crowd of 99,346 watched their match on the Queen's birthday and there was just under 2,000 fewer at the big one. 98,000 people converge on the Melbourne cricket ground and all of them are ready to barrack as keenly as the tradition of the game demands. They come from far and wide and by all modes of transport and the bad weather makes little difference to their enthusiasm. The head of population, the Australian rules game in Melbourne draws greater crowds than any other game in the world. A stir was created before the big game started when the league announced the changing of all players' numbers to preserve their right to this control and, I think, to confuse commentators. The umpires, it seems, are ready, and so is the crowd for action. Despite the rain, the atmosphere at this stage is absolutely electric. <laughs> Melbourne, the Demons, are first out, led by John Beckwith and Ron Barassi. They are an all-conquering side, and their record over the past few seasons has been phenomenal. Rank outsiders and beaten by Melbourne only two weeks ago, here is the Collingwood side. Collingwood, however, are renowned for their fighting spirit, and that's one reason why they are called the Magpies, and the Magpies will be flying high today. The stands are packed, but the overflow record was 116,000 in 1956. Controversial umpire Alan Nash is the man in white, he bounces the ball, and the 1958 Grand Final is underway. It was very, very wet, and the ground was very, very treacherous. These factors, plus Grand Final nerves, caused players to fumble. Play becomes a little congested, but Melbourne are confident, and here they come again with Pacey football. Despite the wet, watch this beautiful pass behind Big Bob Johnson. <laughs> Tense supporters wait now in silence as he lines up the goal. But instead of kicking for goal, he tries to short pass to full forward Ethel Webb, and it's over the line. Throw in, fellows for Collingwood palms it across to Gabalich of Collingwood, and the kick is over towards Melbourne's Dixon. And this mark is taken by Thorold Merritt, one of the finest players in the game, and in top form for Collingwood today. It's best man standing, and both sides are going in harder. Johnson again for the Demons. And Ridley marks his kick right in front. Melbourne's great coach, Norm Smith, is anxious, not happy. now for the second quarter. At this stage, it looked like the same old story, Melbourne too good. In their last ten meetings, Collingwood's best effort has been a draw. However, there is a long time to go. After the change, there came a change. And now you can watch closely as Melbourne's diminutive rover, Ian Ridley, is floored by Collingwood's Bill Sarong. Empire Nash did an excellent job in handling fiery incidents like that and like this. Collingwood's coach, Fonce Kine, shows concern as Melbourne are awarded a free kick on the forward line. 
Collingwood 16 stoner, Ray Gabalich has paid the mark. His shocking kick is whipped up by the dashing Merritt, whom Melbourne are finding as greasy as the ball. Merritt towards the big sticks. And here's his Ruckman fellows missing the mark. And watch Melbourne's great defender, Don Williams, scout around the packs and clear to Dixon on the wing. Here now is a passage of play which inspired Collingwood at a very crucial stage. Youngest player afield and only five feet five in height, Ken Bennett survives a bump and kicks a goal. Melbourne's overworked fullback Peter Marquis kicks off. Like other lines, Melbourne's usually superb defence is below par two. From that scrimmage, Mick Toomey, one member of a famous football family, receives a free. Here it comes, and it's sailing through. There's very little difference in the scores, and Collingwood now have bridged the gap. Best man afield, Collingwood's winger Ken Turner is again under notice. Uh -uh. Looks like a poor tee for Dad tonight. What an outrage. Half time is taken with only two points separating them, and Collingwood, with acting skipper Murray Wiedemann, are anxious to get on with the job. the third quarter, and it proved to be Collingwood's finest. <laughs> Melbourne's dynamo Ron Barassi, in the thick of all the heavy going, is freed by Graham Fellows. Gabalich, Merritt and Harrison look on. It was apparent that Collingwood were gaining the upper hand. They were faster and playing in front of their men. Melbourne forgot the ball in an endeavour to match the Magpies' vigour. This was a magnificent quarter by the Magpies, and scores at three-quarter time are Collingwood 12 goals, 9, 81 points, to Melbourne 7 goals, 6, 48 points. During this interval, we flash you back to the Olympic pool, where on the previous Saturday, Ampol's Victorian manager, Mr. C.L. Morton, presents a cheque for £1,000 to North Melbourne star rover, Alan Aylin. He won this award as the best and fairest player for the year. He was judged as Australia's best in the recent carnival, too. Back to the ground and with 98,000 others. Norm Smith shows concern as he moves amongst the Melbourne players in the last endeavour to win the Premiership. His side in the frying pan is nearly in the fire. In the Magpie camp, Fonce Kine emphatically impresses the Collingwood players to hold Melbourne in this vital last quarter. Murray Wiedemann has his say too. Hold on, hold on, says Fonce Kine. 
Well, the Magpies are confident their advantage has been well won. The strain of a bad day and the attempt to win their fourth successive flag is showing on Melbourne. The fans find it hard to believe that the favourites are going down. Well, we pick them up in the final quarter. Melbourne attack repeatedly, but the sturdy Collingwood defence is too good. And the picture tells its own story. <laughs> a keyed up coach gives more signals than a traffic cop. accepting a pass from Dixon, slams the ball into the goal square, where, from a scrimmage, 19th man Crompton for Melbourne, goal, and the difference of only 19 points with still time on the play. saves a Collingwood attack, he kicks it to the flank, but it's all over, and Collingwood wins the 1958 Grand Final. Up jubilation in the Collingwood camp. Final scores, Collingwood 12 goals, 10, 82 points, Melbourne 9 goals, 10, 64 points. Tony Charlton was the commentator there, and for me, that brings back memories of sitting in one of the pavilions at the Geelong show and watching those grand final footy films over and over again. For the record, St Kilda's Neil Roberts won the Brownlow medal in 58, and Collingwood's Ian Brewer finished on top of the goal-kicking ladder with 73. We'll continue the marathon with North Melbourne's first flag shortly. Bears will have to wait 50 years before they meet in a grand final. 